up down up down up down Brucey B used to scream that and people used to follow suit this is Big Gene from Rawdale, the last big night, cooking in conversation. Taj was good. Thank you for being there early at work. Early to, what did they say? Early to bed, early to rise. Keep a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. Appreciate y'all. Muddy Waters, King React. What's going on with y'all, man? And I'm coming on here this morning. I wanted to come on the last couple of days, and if you may hear it in my voice, uh, when you have an ulcer and it starts acting up on you, um, you can't get excited. You can't, uh, you have to be slumber. And I probably sound that way, and I shouldn't be coming here for y'all. I shouldn't be coming on here to y'all because that's the situation I'm in right now. Uh, I was in the hospital last week because it. Um, I've been taking care of myself, but sometimes an uh, ulcer, if you eat the wrong thing, you know, it could flare up. And then by having a hernia at the same time, around in my stomach area, it just makes it a whole lot worse. So bear with me. I'm going to give you all my thoughts. I'm going to give you all what I know. You know, I did know Andre Harrell. I have I've had the pleasure of being around Andre Harrell. I've had the uh, pleasure of knowing Andre Harrell. Um, and some good, some bad. Uh, I knew Andre Harrell brothers more so than I knew him, his family. They used to stay around in the hood. You know, you got to keep that hood connect when you got certain family members in certain situations. They might, they might need to uh, do some business and take care of some. Man, this is cold. Yo, it's, you need a lot of tissue. So you might need your family members around the hood when you have to take care of some business. So they have to keep their connections in the hood. When they, oh my God, these allergies. My man, please, right now, right now. That's somebody in the 216 Cleveland area, no, no, uh, area code. <laughs> Sorry about that, Cleveland, but I'm doing the show right now. They probably even know that. <laughs> they probably see me talking about them right now. But, uh, can't talk to you, brother. I'm doing the show right now. Anyway, um, I'm going to tell y'all a little things about, you know, Andre Rell. You know, like people say, and I, um, I want to welcome home Southwest T, too, in the midst of talking about this stuff. Uh, Southwest T was a good dude. He always been a good dude. You know what I'm saying? Never knew their business like that. But I can say this about T. Whenever he came around you, I don't care who you was doing security for, uh, he made it known as well as that he was, that he appreciated what you did because he would just come up here and give you a dap. And next thing you know, you have a handful of hundred dollar bills. You know what I'm saying? And he was that type of dude. And I didn't appreciate it. I just, I'm not saying I appreciate him for doing that. I appreciate him more for just being a gentleman every time I seen him. So salute to Southwest T. Boom. Um, uh, people, I don't know if y'all know this, him and uh, his brother both was on that compassion uh, plea to get their sentence released. Um, and they were both denied. And But because of what the prison that T was in, and they was giving release to people that were nonviolent and had uh, less than three or four years left on their sentences. Most of them that was doing, that were model prisoners uh, or, or didn't get any trouble, didn't have no situations. They were released. Um, and it's always based on the prison that you're in, too. Uh, 
if Meach was out in Oregon in a federal penitentiary and you know what uh, city Oregon is or what state that is, and uh, he may not have that liberalness like other places do. And because it may be a certain town, he may got caught in that situation, whereas that uh, they govern his sentence and what he did a whole lot different. So he wasn't released like T, even though they had the same crime. And then they were saying there was speculation that Meach, uh, uh, Meach had a couple of situations whereas that he had cell phones and things like that that he found in jail and everything like that. Um, T, Big Gene is saying, what's up? Me and you, well, we text each other a couple of times while you were locked away and everything like that. And we, like we said, we always spoke as gentlemen. I told the story that everybody, and, and T is home to verify now, that anybody writing a story about how they got they started. My man, my brother, you know what I'm saying? We played basketball together. He was a good dude, KK, Alexander Newell from Detroit. Gave them they start in that particular business. And y'all know what business that is. Me and KK played basketball together. His best friend, one of his best friend, Kevin Thigpen, was my best friend. We grew up together. We played ball together. Um, we all played ball together down at uh, Montgomery, Alabama for a little while. Uh, KK been to my home. Uh, he showed me the best time I ever had in uh, New York and <laughs> and New, New Jersey. When you got a lot of money, you could do that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I got a lot of work going around the house today. Got somebody doing the plumbing, the dishwasher, and I got somebody working on the yard. So if y'all, if I had to stop for a minute before I can get this stuff out and talk to y'all, I will. And like I said, my daughters and them are here from school, and you could be sure they're gonna be bothering me because they're gonna be hungry. Um, they're gonna be hungry, and I told them I'll make them some fish cakes and grits and stuff this morning. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna get to that in a minute, but I want to talk to y'all guys about that. So salute to you, T. Uh, you like I said, uh, I I got your uh, your people's number. I will be giving them the call, and I hope they still have the same number. And I'm just giving you time enough to, you know, settle with your family. You said we was going to have that conversation. We need to have a couple of conversations. And we will, brother. I appreciate that. Holistic Health Imperial. What's up with you, brother? Hope. Thanks for that super chat. Much respect to you out there. That's Holistic. H. I mean, W-H-O-L-I-S-T-C Health Emporium. Thank you, brother, from out there in Detroit. You know what I'm saying? So, um... I gave y'all a little no. So when people start talking stuff, T is home to tell y'all that Alexander Newell, KK, was the one that gave him their start. You know what I'm saying? He did his time and all that stuff like that. KK did his time in the federal joint. He's home. He could write a book. He could. He had a hell of a story. You understand? It was a. He played a hell of a part in that part of them boys, you know, the men coming up in that game back there in Detroit. You understand? So when some people start going, telling their stories and saying that, you know what I'm saying? Y'all got the inside scoop from Big Gene. I'm not talking about what I heard. I'm talking about what I know because I knew both parties. You know what I'm saying? And I know both parties. You understand? So um, it is what it is. I know what people are going to say. You know, they always talk that uh, crazy stuff. Gene, you as a cop, why are you talking gangster stuff? Because I can. Because I can. I'm a grown man. I can say whatever I want to say. I've been there and I backed up whatever I, whatever happened or went down. I've always backed up. You understand? And uh only thing I'm tired of this because it's it's, it's um it's real dear to me is that you know my man Mace 
put it out there when he knew the situation prior to the whole thing. But for, well, he didn't put it out there. He tried to put me with the, the people who were behind, the people who were protecting B, and they say, uh, yo, Gene, you know, these guys talking about, yo, he didn't even shoot. Man, everybody knew what part I played. Everybody knew I was there to protect Big, but I was trying to give my life up for Big, too. You know, I stood behind Big when Puff was running around the place. You know, uh, that's the only thing that ever had gotten to me because I didn't do what I should have done and ride on the side of the car no matter what Puff said or even just stayed in the street. Like, I, I knew to stay in the street. So that's not here nor there. I first met Andre Harrell when uh, my man D. Fur uh, did that cat for him. And uh, if you look at the symbol for Uptown Records, it's a big cat. Um, it's a big cat. Let me roll this up here. And he got on like he got on Nike sneakers and stuff like that. Um, I'm sure some people will bring it up and go look at it. Well, ASAP Ferg, who's hot in the scene right now, who's into the rap stuff, his father is the one who designed that cat for Andre Harrell. Andre Harrell gave him $1,500 for that design. And the promise that he was going to take and use D. Ferg for any designs or any t-shirts or anything that he needed in that business. Tyler Smith, Mac, Min Mac Minute, Muddy Waters, what's up with y'all? So he promised D. Ferg that. And uh, who's that? Somebody else said something. Sorry about that. I got to stop this right here because I don't know what happened. And I still, I still not doing a good job. Uh, stopping this stuff and doing what I need to do when I do this, but I'm working with it. Well, he had promised D. Ferg that he was going to use D. Ferg for any T-shirts or anything that he needed. Night Bolt, thanks for being out there working with me. I appreciate you. Um, and I was like, oh my God. Uh, that was the same thing. Sorry about that, y'all. Uh, he told he promised Deferred that he was going to use Deferred. Now he sent Deferred work. That's how Puff got to him. That's how Heavy D got to him. Cause uh, we did those shirts uh, for Heavy D and everything like that. So that's how Tim Dog got to him. Tim Dog was an intricate part of Uptown Records. Not the Tim Dog, the rapper. Uh, talking about Walt Compton. No, no, nah, no, nah, not that dude there. <laughs> it's it's another Tim Dog. This Tim Dog was the mastermind over there at Uptown Records that people don't know. He was musically inclined, whereas that he knew how. If you seen that uh uh video uh 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 so for real and heavy D is coming to the uh table saying Yo, do y'all like them? And Tim Dog's right there with Andre Harrell saying, "Yeah, yeah, I like them." Tim Dog is the mastermind. He's the he know how to market. He know how to produce. He know how he produced a lot of Heavy D song. He 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 did uh, the Lost Boys. That was his group before he went to being the president. I think he was the president of Electric Record, and he worked under Clyde Davis, and uh, um, he worked under over Clyde Davis, and he had to get out the office because Clyde Davis allegedly uh was uh walking around the office with vaseline on his shoulder i think he wanted to shoulder massage he was hurting he even put vaseline on his shoulder I, I i guess because he needed a a massage or something um you know, like i said i'm gonna run through this man uh what's somebody saying Yeah, it's a Swiss logo. Well, he put it under there. It made it look like Nike, but it wasn't a Nike logo. You know what I'm saying? But you would probably think that it was Nike or whatever. You understand? 
Somebody say Tim used to live right next door to them, King Cooley. <laughs> okay. But Tim was a good dude. Uh, uh, and uh, he had to get out of Uptown Record because Tim would have probably killed him. You know what I'm saying? Playing with him like that. Or had one of us come do it for him. That was my boy. <laughs> now, we wouldn't have killed him, but we, you know, we, don't, we didn't do stuff back then in those days. But uh, if he would have sent us at Clyde, what up, Q, Ice? If he would have sent us at Clyde, we didn't care back then. We was young, dumb, full of cum. You understand? It was a whole different lifestyle. But Tim knew all the players. You know what I'm saying? I think Wilson, Tim Harris, shout out to Wilson. Yeah, that's all he got, uh, Flubert. But I told D Fur, I said, D. You got to get a contract for that, man, because if you're going to use that, and I told him about Puff, too. I said, yo, um, ask them to give you a contract. Every time they use it, you get a half a cent. Had them sign that, bro. That's a logo. They're using it for a label. Ask them to say you get a half a cent every time they use it. And you get a chance to recoup that twice a year. But, you know, D was a good-hearted dude, and he trusted Andre Herrera to do the right thing by him. You know what I'm saying? You got to realize is that Andre Herrera was also a puff mentor and a lot of mentors and the people in this game. You understand? And being a mentor, you know what I'm saying, your students learn from you. Now, a lot of people going to get Andre Harrell his props because he did all these top groups and everything like that. But I'm a type of dude, if I love you when you alive, I'm going to love you in death. You understand? And I'll hold your word and I'll hold who you are true to my heart if I have to die with it or die for you. You understand? I didn't uh, particularly like Andre Harrell at all. I didn't like him as a man. I didn't like who he was. But that's my own opinion. And I would tell him in his face or I would tell his brothers and them. His brothers and them knew that because when they used to come through the blocks and everything like that, and they used to be looking for stuff, you understand? And they be looking for the people that they dealt with. Oh my God. These allergies. We always had conversations. Woo. Like I said, they brothers and them had to stay in contact with people. So people gonna get mad at me because I'm telling the truth about dudes. And People were blowing up my phone this morning and blowing up my, you know, Gene, you're going to speak about Andre Harrell died. They said he had a heart attack. They said he had, what you call, you got to understand those people that you see the stars out there in California and they living in California, making California their residence is because they could get everything downplayed and that music and that that movie industry, they see the same people around the same people. So that narrative is going to be what they people want it to be. Now, I don't know what happened to Andre Harrell. And I'm not going to be like, like some people, yo, rest in peace. You was this, you did that and stuff like that. Man, listen to me. I don't care. Whether he here or gone, we know what he did while he was here. And we know what he probably could have done. But the people that he mentored continue the slave mentality that he started with them.
Just another day. Thank you, man, for that super chat. Well, Gene, if you can't say nothing good with somebody, they die, you can't say nothing at all. Okay, you want me to shut up? Okay, I'm here right now. After this, I'll shut up. Was he a ruthless businessman? You could look at him that way. But he messed up more kids' life in the music game than he helped. Everybody that came up under him broke, disgusted, and can't be trusted. And in the infamous words of MREC, spooky. <laughs> Fun boy shit. Hate me if you want to. Don't care. What you eat don't make me shit. If you can't, if you don't like it, find somebody else to watch. I'm this slumber right now because of my ulcer, y'all. A lot of people know the stuff that I'm saying. And I tell y'all that all the time. But those people ain't going to say what I say. And I get called on it. You know, I get called on it. I got guys that's real close to me that's still in the industry. Yo, Gene. And they said this to me. You got to understand those guys got to eat now. They don't have no shows. They don't go into any, uh, any events. Any kind of way of them making money, they can't make money no more. So that's why you see them on Instagram. That's why you see them on Patreon. That's why you see them selling their souls to revolt for shows and stuff. That's why they see them sitting down and about to pray. Because they need to feed their families. Everybody can't, but I kept a government job or a job, period, that I don't have to work for the rest of my life. And as long as they keep this government going some kind of way, they'll send me a check. Chauncey Wallace, Vincent Green, you know, you know what I always say? That's why I pimp the mail, man. Alfonso Thornton. Come on. Stop, Alfonso. We don't speak like that. Was he gay? If two men lay down, how many homos get up? Oh, they're going to strike me for that one. Shout out to South Carolina in the building and, and South California, Southern California. I don't know about that, Travis R. <laughs> I am not even thinking that way. Puff used to dog Andre Harrell. Now he gonna get on here and talk about, yo, he was my mentor and I like, he talked about Andre Harrell. Every time Andre Harrell was around, when I was there, like a dog. Now, they could have developed a better relationship and grown. But when Andre Harrell came back to work for Puff in the early 2000s, 
Puff used to talk about him like a dog, say Andre couldn't find a hit if it had bust him in the head, in the back of the head. Used to talk about him like a dog. Easy Hana, what's going on with you? And thanks for that super chat, bro. So, Vincent Green got much love for St. Louis also. See, I'm not a hater because I'm the dude that I don't care. But because I come and tell you the other side of it, when people are going to come out here, yo, he hurt me. It's, I'm so hurt that we lost Andre Harrell, you understand? And he was such a, a inspiration in my life. And they start, you know, tearing out of you and then like cash at me, uh, PayPal me, or uh, we're going to do this in the, in, in the middle of that. Okay. I understand. That's the plumber downstairs. You know what I'm saying? I understand all that. So my um, thing of it is that got much love for his brothers and them. As I said before, they always stayed in the hood. And, you know, people knew them they can they came through constantly <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. they was good dudes andre he taught and his i guess you would call his apprentice came out to do outdo the master and we know who that is. Mr. Praying Hands itself. <laughs> oh, man, I'm sorry about that, man. But when I laugh or if I talk a certain way, that shit hurts. <laughs> I bet them, I bet the AMF is back there saying, I hope that nigga die. God ain't finished with me yet, brother. Trust and believe. And listen, and when I do go there, and if anyone y'all and any y'all still around around like that, man, y'all ain't got to say I love Big Gene. You understand? I know the people that got respect for me. I know the people, you understand, I might have 60,000 that subscribe and 10,000 may look at me and go back and look at me again and then again. You understand? I know the handful of people that sit back and they'll cash at me and they'll, uh, 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 they'll do things like that. And I appreciate that. Um, you guys that's out here, I can just only be me. And whether you like me or love me or hate me, it's not going to stop me from being me. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that no more, man. You know, like I said, Andre Harrell, you know, I knew him personally. Uh, uh, hey, hi, bye. What's up? What's going on? Hey, this, that, and the third. And, uh, He wasn't a good dude. If you wasn't a part of that, what they say, happy go lucky? Is that the terminology? Or oh no, they say fun boy, crew, and that team that they used to meet up and how they little things. They didn't F with you. So that was fine and good with me. It wasn't my cup of tea anyway. So you got to look at the groups he had to develop and where they at and what they had to do in order to survive. 
Yo. Any young guy, any old guy my age, and five or ten years, five to eight years younger, would say, Jodeci got them more pussy. I'm sorry, ladies. Jodeci help them make love more than any group. Roxanne L. Stowe, thanks for that super chat. I mean that uh, cash app. The cash app is Big Gene 52. Thank you. Jodeci Help them get more, I mean, more make more love than probably any group at that time. Come and talk to me. I really want to meet you, girl. I really want to know your name. Oh, come and talk to me. I really want to meet. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. Your name, oh my god, them boys, yo, broke, disgusted, and can't be trusted. Suge Knight had to come and help them get out their contract, they ain't getting no points, no, they, they ain't own no, 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 no masters, no nothing. Come on, man. Stevie J was a part of that, that whole group. They all came from around the same place, the same time. He was making music for them. They should have been able to eat off their music for the rest of their life and continue. Slez, S-L-E-Z, what up with you? Thank you for that cash out. So my whole thing about it is, look at the groups. Grand Poobah. Come on, man. He had it. He had to set the precedent. But when you set it with poison, when you plant poison around your fruit, the tree ain't going to grow. Now, you may have seen him and he was Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde or whatever groups he, you know, he was a part of or uh he may be inspired you to go do something because you see a black man doing rap. I got a plumber here. I'm sorry about that, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry about that. You may hear that noise on the outside. And I got somebody working in the yard cutting bushes and stuff. Well, I'm apologizing, but it is what it is. Y'all shouldn't have been bothering me talking about Gene. What's up with Andre Rail? Gene, you ain't say nothing about Southwest T. Gene, Gene, Gene. Easy Hunter. <laughs> Tell the lead Gene alone. <laughs> Ronzo Thornton, what's up with you, man? Why you keep wanting to know what's he gay? Too late now, Alfonso. <laughs> Alonzo. <laughs> yeah. Tell Alonzo it's too late. <laughs> He ain't praying with you. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, I want to jump off this subject for one minute because I should have started this program with this because I caught a backlash. No homo. Uh, you can't say homo, right? You can't, can I say homo? No. You can't say that? Anyway, that's just a phrase, YouTube. Anyway, 
uh I think one of the ladies, a few gentlemen too. Yo, Gene, what you want our black men to die out there in the street, man? You know if you fight a cop or you swing on a cop, you understand? Uh, uh, you, they gonna kill you, they gonna shoot you and everything like that? They say, you know they're going to kill you. They're going to shoot you. They're going to do something like that. Listen here. I'm saying this. If anybody start beating you upside your head and you just standing there, and if he didn't have a uniform on, you would defend yourself. You will save your life. Somebody is trying to have you look, you know, beat you until you retarded. I mean, I'm not retarded. You can't, I can't say retarded. I can't use, I can't say that they beat you till you retarded or, or mentally, that's the word, mentally challenged or Jerry's kids or, or how you looking like you. You need a march from the dawn, a, a march that, that that you one of them commercials. Somebody start doing that to you. What do you think you supposed to do to you for yourself? I'm gonna continue. Let this man start beating me in my head with this stick. I'm telling young brothers out there. If a cop come up there and just start swinging on you, nigga, you better swing back. You going to get the same charges whether he get his stuff off or not. Resisting arrest, interference with government procedures, assault on an officer. When they showed a videotape, you had your hands down behind your back, but now you like this. The slobbing on the side of your mouth. That's why I didn't start with that. That's why I didn't start with that particular thing that I was talking about. That's why I didn't start with that. Because I knew that was going to take me to another level. And you see how slumber and how like laid back I was. But when I see how people in law enforcement take their job for granted. When you're supposed to hold up a code of conduct. The cops don't even supposed to be using profanity. That's in their code of conduct. But see, what we as a people, they got us, oh, you snitching, you snitching, you snitching. If people start going in there and filing, calling 311, filing reports that he used profanity, that he was cursing, he can't get advances, he can't get awards, he can't even move, he can't even get out that precinct area because they want to... They put them in Harlem, but they really want to go to Queens and Nassau. They want to go to Queens and they want to go someplace closer to their home. They don't want to come all the way to Harlem or be in Brooklyn or certain parts of Brooklyn. So uh, I'm saying to y'all, if we as a people start using when they curse, when they, uh, they videotape, you tape it, you download it to... Uh, the 311 site or whatever site they have when they doing corruption and let people know and follow through, they start treating us better. Get on your councilman, your city councilman on top of their head. You understand? Don't look for the president. Don't look for the governor. 
you know, look for that guy right there, that representative, that city councilman and everything like that. Yo, why is these police keep on coming around and acting like that in our community? Now, the cop that I spoke about, I hear he's on death duty, but he's still getting paid. He should not even get paid. He threw up his hands like he was a, a dude in the street and he wanted to fight. So now he should be charged with assault and battery. Why are they not charged? Because they are NYPD and cops. They can't be charged for breaking the law. That citizens should have the opportunity and say, yo, I want to charge him with assault and battery. He should be able to, that citizen should be able to charge that officer, not him just putting on desk duty. He should get a charge with that. And then that means he has to go off duty without getting paid. He shouldn't be getting paid for that. Now he's sitting back chilling, answering phones. Come on, man. That's why I didn't go first with that. This was supposed to be a good thing done to let y'all know what I felt and what I thought about Andre Harrell. And a shout out to my man, Southwest T. Nightboat, thanks for being out there for me, boy. Monique Hill, what you mean by that, mama? Maxine Water is full of it out here. We already know what to do out here. Okay. What I think about Takashi 6 9 being out of prison? Think not. Good. Young kid made some mistakes, had some idiots behind him that could have had a cash cow, could have milked that to the all the way for the rest of their life, but they want to do, you know, they want to do the gang bang thing and all like that. They want to say all this stuff like that. That's on them, bro. They ain't know how to take that. And, and milk it the white right way. Now he out of jail. He out of jail. That's on him. Good luck. Yeah, nine one one is a joke. I said three one one, man. You call three one one, and then you put it in a citizen uh, review complaint. Then you let your councilman know. You know, see, we don't do that. You call your councilman office and tell them you put it to, because I put in citizen, uh, uh, check the record. I put in a citizen complaint against cops. Couple of times. If you do something, you go past the uh, uh, thing with me, listen, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a use all rights and I'm going to have a chance to look over you on that table. You was talking all that tough talk out there in the street like you wanted to do something to me, like that you wasn't a police officer, that you was some kind of gangster. I want you to be that same gangster right here that that stuff that you was talking out there, and here I am. Your boys ain't around. You ain't got your gun. I ain't got my gun. What's up? You get a chance to talk to them right then and there. They get a chance to see you eye to eye. You sit right across the table from them. I'm just telling you why they don't do what they're supposed to do for us. CJ77 stocks, that's what I'm trying to let them know. Jod, yeah. Andre and Puff destroyed a lot of artists because they used that same Sony and that Arista record model, allegedly, but they said it they sell. 
They use their models. Dion, um, I'm letting you know, Dion, I think that's Ellison, that they use that same model, Roxanne. Somebody asked me something about Sean Reed's death. I don't think nothing of it. I don't know if that's me in the chat. I didn't see him. And meet you in the chat. Meet you know what happened on the bus ride when we was on the uh we was out in Detroit and we was on the uh bus on the uh uh, uh one of his uh tour buses. We had just came from the club. He'll know what he was doing. I'm gonna speak on that. So you know what they use the same formula you understand where the artists get a little upfront money the little starter kits and then whatever shows they managers can get for them and get money out those shows but any of the album sales album go milk uh, uh jodeci sell five million albums if they get fifty thousand off a piece off that they'd be lucky now you're talking about five million albums. You know, just say ten dollars an album. That's fifty million dollars. They can't get fifty thousand in their pocket. That's crazy. But that's how the life was. Dream master. Thanks for being out there for me. Listen, I had the opportunity to be around a lot of artists and I would have been around those artists whether I work for Bad Boy or not. You got to realize the music industry came to the streets. I was in the streets. One of the founders of Same Gang, founder Slick and the Family, managed one of the top security teams Manage one of the. Why would you sit that on my counter? Um, manage one of the top security teams. That's what the plumber did. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry about that. Manage one of the top security teams in New York City. We did the outside of all the major parties. God brother had one of the top game rooms and one of the best fit stores in Harlem. He's part owner in one of those. So all the celebrities came by our way. You wanted to know Slick and the Family, 12th Street Posse, and by me running the front doors of all the major parties, thanks to Tim Dogs, thanks to Heavy D, thanks to P. Diddy, uh, Puffy, me, uh, thanks to Chaz, me running all the parties. You understand? And you had to get through me. Because I was the one say, let them through the line, let them, yeah, they go like that. I knew a lot of celebrities from that. I knew a lot of important people. I'm saying that to say that my opinion comes from my personal involvement with people.
Thank Black Zionists. <laughs> yeah, they want to suit it up. Thank Black Black Zionists because they want to kill us. They want to. They want this world to be theirs, so they can go back and forth with the race and the people that they want to have in here. Right. So I'm saying that to say that that we. Hold on. Lost my train of thought right there. Can't put it right there. I'm saying that to say that I would have been an important fixture of how stuff went down in Harlem in the music business because I was there. I saw it. I orchestrated some things that kept people alive in the game. I brought people together. I saw people get torn out the game. I saw their they ideals get stolen and taken from them because they trusted other people in the game like Andre Harrell, like Diddy, like Russell Simmons. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't want... I'm trying to figure. You see, I'm trying to figure my house. I'm I'm painting on this side. I painted this side, and I'm gonna paint on that side. You understand? Know I don't want them to come take my shit. <laughs> Not without a fight. <laughs> yeah. We all have our humble beginning, know where we wherever we from. I came all the way from Wellston. You understand? Went from St. Louis City to Wellston, St. Louis County, and then went out to college and came back to New York, stayed in New York, been in New York from 82 to made it in, in from 82, start coming to New York. And then in 86, when I graduated, been here ever since. We all have our humble beginnings. But it ain't where you from is where you at. And it ain't from who you are and what you've had is what you've done and what you do and who have you helped. Now, they'll have this big extravaganza if they can to see off Andre Harrell, whether it's on Instagram whether it's on YouTube or how are they going to try to play it off and play it away? Because he was about to do this movie, Uptown. They was about to do the Uptown story. Now you got to get it from Tim Dahl because he was there. It wasn't Diddy. Remember, Andre Harrell fired Diddy from that City College incident. Don't let nobody else tell you it was nothing different. It was because those nine kids lost their life, big dog, at City College. Thanks for that super chat. Shouldn't I expose them for showing the artists how they were getting ripped off? If Tupac lived and Death Row East popped off, Puff would have been done. Oh, that's what Big Dog said. Out there, Cali. Salute to you, Big Dog. Anyway, where we at with this? They're going to get this big extravaganza about Andre Harrell. Ain't hey, okay. He was good to certain people, but he could have taught his artists. He could have helped his artists, big dog. You understand? He could have showed them, yo, not, I'm not going to take all of y'all money. I'm just going to take some. I'm not going to leave y'all broke, disgusted. You understand? But I'm going to give y'all enough game that y'all could flip it and take care of yourself for the rest of y'all life. And I'm gonna live well, I'm gonna live well off this. And y'all gonna live good too. Cause you can't tell me that how you can't make no sense out of it. That I write this song, I perform this song, I probably made it, 
the music or something like that or whatever you put the music like that you can't tell me i can't eat off this song for the rest of my life or the rest of the time they play it and it's like that and that's how it is Could y'all get those likes up for me? Thank you. That helped what they call the um, the people that that, that helped. Uh, uh, y'all tell me what it helped. Somebody told me it helped some shit. Uh, right now, I'm not, I don't even have half the likes, and I got a lot of people in this channel. Oh, they're not going to give me the likes because I said I ain't like Andre Orell. <laughs> I didn't dislike him. I didn't like the I didn't like his business tactics. I don't like how he treated my dude and what he did with uh D Ferg. They gave him that iconic symbol. That was a part of hip hop history. Yo, Gene, I tried to keep this to myself, but why didn't, why did you go enjoy Death Row Records? Who said I didn't enjoy Death Row Records? I enjoyed Death Row Records. And if Death Row East Coast would have came to New York, I probably would have been over head of their security, to be honest, because Big D was doing it, and Big D and Chaz was like this. And they knew I knew everybody, all the artists who came from uh, 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 California, Mac 10, uh, Nate Dahl, Exhibit, Ray J. I used to bodyguard them when they came here. If they felt they needed a gunman. Yep. Yeah, KD. I threw I threw the bait out there. <laughs> Ain't answer, right? I'm reading a couple of these things right here and then I'm going to close it up. I know y'all tired of me, man. But I'm going to come and do a Mother Day show tomorrow, man. You know, I'm going to make some uh, fish cakes. You know, I'm take three kinds of fish, some mackerel, <laughs> salmon. Mackerel's all right. Salmon, some tuna. And I make these fish cakes. They like salmon cakes, stuff like that. I'm going to make those tomorrow. Everybody speaking on what Suge did. It won't be me praying with him, bro. Curtis Jones, thank you for that, brother. Somebody saying something positive. Monique Hill, yep, that's what we're speaking about. And that shows the greatness of somebody. Like, when you met me as a parole officer, if I didn't enhance or better your life, if you you might already have the tools to say, yo, when I get out of jail, I ain't never going back. You understand? And never went back, got did the right thing. But if I came into your life, I gave you something to go with and take care of yourself and your family for the rest of your life. Either if it was some kind of just knowledge as being a man, work ethics, or trying to do something different in your life. That's what I was there to do. So, and then in a relationship, 
if a woman can't grow from you and be a better person, a better woman after they leave you, then what has she learned from you? See, anytime people come into our life, we supposed to know the do's and the don'ts and the will and the won'ts after they come out of our lives. And if I can't better you after we've left each other, I didn't do nothing for you. See how these little artists was better, how they better themselves after they left. Them. Not good. You say, did he? Okay. But he started praying in a whole nother direction. <laughs> Clyde Davis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, I hope they feel a lot better and to give y'all a better show next time or uh, a better conversation. But my level was down low because of um, the ulcer and the hernia, the uh, scar tissue hernia. So I'm looking to get better. I'm trying to get better. I'm going to try to come on here tomorrow just to shout out to the mothers and just to be here with you guys. I want to say to y'all, thank y'all for y'all time. This has been Big Gene from Raw Deal, the last big night cooking and conversation. I love y'all. Stay chazzed up. Nip it in the bud. If you have a problem for this Nipsey Hustle. And like I told y'all in 2019, 2020, 2020, the vision, the insight, all the things that we know and we need to know for the rest of our life will come in front of you. Have the knowledge, have the insight, and have the love. Listen, listen, look, and you will learn. Peace.